Hello friends, I made this for. I decided after doing my three-part series on Saturn to make a quickie video to go over all those fun things that I talked about in my three bigger videos. So if you want a deep dive into the medicine of Saturn, make sure to check out the links below where I break down what is Saturn, what sign Saturn is in, and what we're moving into coming up. But you're here, so let's talk about what you're here about. <laughs> As always, my name is Lauren, and as always, I'm not an expert. I'm not a particularly great or awesome. I'm just a human person here to share my opinion about things that can be really good medicine, like astrology and the tarot. So you might not agree with what I have to say, and that's fine, because the tarot and astrology means different things to each person, but let's dive into it. So I'm just going to look through one deck today because I like to go through a, you know, a few decks all the time. <laughs> but today I'm just going to dive into one deck to give us a reflection on the themes of each of these big things. So let's start with Saturn, why we're here. Saturn in the tarot is actually associated with the world. and the world, we can see a reference to our ringy rings, right? We see our ringy rings around our person. We also see this person is open. There's this idea of expansion. So you might not know that this card is associated with Saturn because Saturn gets a fat, bad fucking rep and it shouldn't. So here's the thing, big themes. There's completion. Every time we get through that two and a half, three year cycle with Saturn, we're completing some big internal work. Some people like to call this karmic work, but I don't think that term is usually very helpful when we're talking about Saturn. Yes, Saturn has big lessons, but these lessons might repeat themselves. I don't think karma is actually the best phrase for it. If you think that works for you, Bitch, okay, whatever you want. I don't fucking care. This is, how, this is my channel. You get your own. <laughs> anyway, talking about co completion, we're talking about finishing up big, big cycles within our lives. And these can be cycles within changing our structures, maybe around identity, maybe around purpose, maybe around anything. But Saturn's here to remind us that not only does the limit exist, but the limit exists for a reason. So as we're moving through this, we might really get some insight through the cycles of Saturn, judgment, where we take, need to take the blindfold off, where we, the blindfold might even be, and where we need to process our structures and person purpose external and internal so that we can do our work. It's about how do we show up and how do we drop in. So Saturn is actually really big medicine, right? We don't have to see it as big daddy Saturn, but I digress. Next card, because Saturn right now is in Capricorn, or we can always look at Capricorn through the veil of the devil. Now, again, people like to talk about good or bad cards. Oh, what a bad card. But actually, this card has a lot of good medicine to it, very potent medicine, because it's here to teach us some really big things. So changing our structures around identity and purpose, even more so, because we can see where the limit is happening and where we feel tied down. Saturn in Capricorn is going to a came to illuminate all sorts of why the limit exists and also why we need this mastery to utilize our resources properly, right? Because even our wounds can be resources. We can use our wounds as places of better understanding, deeper knowing, and reclaiming our souls. Yeah, that's actually a big theme with this card. Reclaiming who we are. We don't have to be tied down and limited by these chains. We can repurpose them into something that is a better value to us. So that can be a big thing, right? As someone with mental health issues, I have usually thought that that is my weakest point. But actually, if I take the veil off, I can see that even though 
my mental illness might be challenging at times, it's actually where some of my strength comes from because it gives me a different perspective in the world. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's about what I do with it. So that's just my personal example. Of course, yours is going to look different. And it might be really important for you to look through maybe um, old diaries or journal entries through the past two and a half years to reflect and see what are the big themes? What did you reclaim in this two and a half, three year process? Where did you lean into awareness? Because leaning into awareness is another big thing. Also becoming who we really are. <laughs> it's just really fun. But one thing that we need to be really important is how are we judging things? The life, death, rebirth process. You know, when we talk about the world, we're actually talking about how we step back into the fool's journey, right? So when Saturn does its thing, we might be feeling really extra funny. We might be feeling really extra tied down. Because again, remember, Saturn is the planet ruler of Capricorn. So some of the themes within Capricorn, the devil, do overlap. So here's one thing you don't want to do or want to see if you've been doing this during this time. Because again, it's not about you need to do this or, or that. It's listen to your intuition, follow your heart, and of course, have an open mind to most things. But most importantly, where are you limiting yourself? And that might be in your own belief system. Do you believe strictly something that is not actually of value to you? Another personal thing, I really don't like the term low vibration. Don't like it. Because it alludes to this idea that your vibration is what's attracting bad things to happen to you. So, just so you know, I don't agree with that idea because it's um, victim blaming. Don't like it at all. So it doesn't serve me. Even though it's something that I agreed with for years, at this point, I made the switch. That doesn't resonate anymore. So listen intently. What does and what doesn't resonate? Because that's really fucking important. Lastly, let's talk about where we're going. So Aquarius is the next sign. And just as a little reminder, the devil is a contraction. So is Capricorn. So is any earth or water sign most of the time. There's a little bit of contraction because there's that inward or that yin energy. Yang is the outward, or we can use it as the fire air energy. Boom, explosions. So here we have a contraction. And of course, everyone's like, well, Lauren, contraction does sound negative. Expansion doesn't have to be comfortable either. Throw that out your brain. It ain't seven you. Where we had this pain, where we realized where our wounds were, here is the star to release the wounds. But in the words of my beautiful teacher, Lindsay Mack, sometimes you have to open the wound a little more to make it heal right. You got a broken leg and it healed bad? Break it again. Because that's where we're going, friend. The themes around this one are rest and restore, cleansing, rebirth. We see the water being poured out here and here, almost as if offering to the collective and the personal connection to that healing. We also see the person nude. And what that can mean is, it is about vulnerability. So you're gonna have to be vulnerable. We're stepping in from this guarded place. We might feel really guarded and are on guard in Capricorn and Saturn, and now, it's time to open up those old wounds, baby. It's time to do some generational healing, friend. It's time to get into our personal expansion for ourselves and the collective. But it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. Crying is healing, but it's also not comfortable, right? Or maybe it is, just depends on you. But a big thing is open heart, open surrender. Open heart, open surrender. Do not feel jaded. Do not be afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone or stepping into where those wounds might be healing. 
Maybe we have to undo some of that work so we can get back deeper, deeper, deeper. But another big thing with this card is there's this idea of one being rigid with this one and with this one becoming disconnected. A humanitarian ideology that feels distant. So make sure that as we make this switch into Aquarian energy, to be soft with yourself, but also soft with others. Understand that we are all healing. Not that you need to just let people be awful or stop just stop trying to fight for a good cause. Yeah, I get it. Nazis are the worst. White supremacists are the worst. I'm not saying that they're not going to not be the worst. But part of our healing is making sure we're taking care of ourselves. Yes, the fight is long, but remember to rest and restore. Because yes, the fight is long. And we have to have an open heart. And that means open heart to our healing and the healing of others. Again, this isn't saying it's a free pass. But there is some big, deep medicine. We're spilling it out for us, and we're spilling it out for them, them, all of them, the collective them. So with that said, the last takeaway is we heal for all. Be mindful. Be soft. You don't have to fight so hard. The fight is long. So make sure you do it sustainably. Make sure you're listening intently. Instead of making rash decisions or feeling like you have to break every single structure around. Yes, you do. You probably do. But where is this is, yeah, we're burning shit. We have to make peace with some really internal shit. Again, this is me and my perspective. Not saying that anyone's way of handling this movement, this from Cap Capricorn to Aquarius is wrong or should be judged because it shouldn't. Your experience is yours and mine is mine. And this is just my takeaway or has been my takeaway using the cards from the tarot. So with that said, please make sure most importantly to be gentle with yourself. You're, we're all becoming who we really are. Don't stop fighting but make sure to take a nap. And please vote. Bye-bye.